Oh, hello everybody. <clears throat> well, I just realised I forgot to put my second mic on. I'm so on together today. Seriously, on together. Give me two seconds. <clears throat> I have two mics, you see. I have one here, which is a very good mic, for when I'm painting and talking. And then I have this little one, which is hopefully on now, for when I'm not looking that way. <laughs> um, <clears throat> interesting day today. I'm, I've literally just whacked the cameras on. It's late in the day for me to be painting now. It's like three o'clock. Clocks just went back yesterday, the day before, whenever it happened. So really it's four o'clock. It's getting dark now <clears throat> at five. It's a beautiful day outside, but every now and again, there's a cloud or two coming over. So I've had to put a fill light in for now, just to be able to have enough light to stream by. So um, today I'm, what little fella? I know, but I'm kind of busy. I'm sorry. He just wants a pat. Studio cat has woken up, spends almost his entire life sleeping now. He's 18. Now he's going to start clawing the door to be out. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so, um, you probably know, if you were watching last week, I've been working on this painting of Quincy's, which has ended up being a little bit more experimental than I expected it to be. And I suppose I'm kind of in a, an exploratory mode at the moment. And I started adding some leaves at the front. And um, <laughs> hello, hello, hello. Um, I started adding some leaves at the front and um, just random uh, marks, really, just to see how it would look in the composition. And I thought it would be a really good idea to paint some leaves so that when I'm doing a painting, if I want to add some, I've got some studies. Let me switch over to the camera. Stop yakking and switch onto the cameras, Paul. Um, oh, here's the study. Here's the, here's the painting that I was working on last week. I've, I've done two sessions on this and I, this leaf was actually in the setup and these are just marks because I felt like the composition wanted something. Maybe even back here, maybe over here. So let me show you though. The photo I took of what I've got on my still life table today. Mm. Beautiful. Hello, Iris. Hello, Daniel. Nice to see you. Uh, welcome to everybody who's just joining. I hope everything is all right. Do let me know if you can hear me and if you can, um, if you can see me okay. Um, <clears throat> looks like people can see me all right on on Facebook and YouTube, because I stream to both at the same time these days through some clever little bit of software called Restream, which is great. Am I live? I think I'm live. Either that or I'm just standing here with a palette knife in my hand talking to myself. Who knows? I'm, I'm going to assume that I'm live. Let's get the palette up palette. Um, I want to be able to see what I'm doing. You want you to be able to see what I'm doing on the palette. Oh, I've already started messing about with some stuff today. This is how disorganized I am uh, today for streaming at least. I've been trying to get everything ready for. Thank you, Sean. That's brilliant to hear. Is that Christopher? If not, I know someone with the same second name as you. Um, I'm desperately trying to get things ready for the sign up for the autumn colors workshop. We're nearly there. It's the last little bits that always seem to take the time. I'm hoping, I was hoping to have it open for sign up today. Now I'm hoping to have it open for sign up tomorrow. I just want to make sure everything's right before I make it all live. I'm really excited about this one and um, really want to do a good job of it have some exceptionally beautiful subjects. I'm feeling completely inspired by what we're going to be doing. I'm just cleaning up my palette a little bit because I was I've been messing about with some colors. 
early on today. Autumn colours. There's just a few little things I need to do before I can open the sign up. For anyone who's waiting for it, I'm sorry it's taken me a while. Um, I promise it will be worth it. <laughs> It's going to be a little bit different this next one than the flower painting one. If you were on the flower painting one, that was all done in live sessions. This one is going to be 50-50. So there's going to be one, because I think some people found it um, kind of intense doing two live sessions a week. And the live sessions can be intense because you need to watch and paint at the same time. And doing anything and painting at the same time is a pretty tough call. Hello, Elaine. Did I use the Montel chips? That's got to be Christopher. Um, what for the leaves? No, I haven't. I've got I've got these chips out for. I have some chips out on the palette. Can you see them? Uh, but I've got them out for something else. What do I need? I need some turps. Oh, I'm almost out. Just a dribble left. So I'm probably going to just stream uh, just for a little while today, as long as the light lasts. I just want to get started laying in some of these leaves and um, I kind of, I know even going into this, I, like, I would like to give this a whole day because it's kind of experimental. It's, I don't know how it's going to turn out. I'm not looking for a painting really out of this. I'm looking for maybe some some studies that I can, I can use in paintings. But you never know where things are going to go, but I really, I really do, could have done with starting this much earlier today. But, um, just been busy with online stuff for the last couple of days and trying to get everything ready. I find the more I, the further I get through like living this life that we've chosen for ourselves now, living out in the countryside and um, living by our wits a little bit, I suppose, like it was a big, um, it was a big leap to come out here and decide to turn full time professional painter and teacher. It's been absolutely inspiring and wonderful. Um, I would say one of the main things that strikes me about it, if anyone who's thinking about doing the same thing, is there's just so many different things to cover. Gradually, bit by bit, I think I'm getting better at it. <coughs> we want, um, I wonder if we're going to want a green-yellow. Let's wait and see. What have I got out on the palette? Titanium white, cadmium yellow. This is naphthol red. Transparent red oxide raw umber and black. You know I'm going to need some green gold. Michael Harding green gold, very, very wonderful. Let's just paint. Come on, little fella. I knew you were going to ask to be back in. Alberto from Bogota. How do you pronounce that? Bogota in Colombia. I don't know. You are very, very welcome, Alberto. It's nice to see you. I love it when I hear from people in different parts of the world. It's just so, it's very inspiring. Um, have I got any linseed oil? Yes, I'm going to have, I'm going to put a couch on first. Roughly mixed, there's a little bit of terps. You could use gamsol, some linseed oil. Um, Get a rough old brush, cover the panel. This is just so basically I'm working wet into wet the whole time. I kind of want these, I want to start expressively. I want the shadow in the background. So I say I really, I'm not, I'm not approaching this with too many preconceptions. I don't really know what's going to happen today. But I just want to get some ideas about how I may maybe just exploring the shapes today. So this is ivory black, 
raw umber. Try not to get any paint on the painting next to it. Raw umber and um, titanium white, just to tone the, the panel and break the break that kind of vacant space. Let me have a quick scroll up. I think I might be not keeping up with the comments very well today. Catherine, good to see you. Hello. Nice to see you, Daniel. Candy's here as well. Good to see you. Elaine, great to see you. Daphne, you made it. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Ginny is here. Good to see you, Ginny. Lovely. Apologies to anybody I've, I've, I've missed. I can't uh, go all the way up to see everybody. The light in here is absolutely stunningly gorgeous. Well, I should say the light outside is stunningly gorgeous. A beautiful autumn light. I don't know. There's probably a scientific explanation for, for uh, what, what makes autumn light different. But to me, it's just, it's really, there's something really poetic about it. I really uh, love. Hello, Joan. Nice to see you. How am I going to approach this? Well, there's a shadow at the back, so I'm going to begin there. This area is all in shadow. This is, um, that might be a little bit too much chroma. That is raw umber, mostly. Need more raw umber, I think. Um, and I added a little bit of chroma to it with, I have a leaf there, leaf over here probably, and coming down there. I did a little bit of chroma to it with some transparent red oxide and Michael Harding green gold. I mean, it's going to be a lot darker in places. I'm sorry, Christopher, I won't be able to give you monsters. I can guess, I can maybe might be able to guess some, but it's going to be pretty much on the fly. It's going to be a good brush. It was with the clips half inch. I just want to start getting something in because you know, if I'm being completely honest, I'm slightly um, nervous about this subject and not really sure how I'm going to approach it. So I just want to start. Perhaps, uh, well, definitely, I, I suppose, a little more freely than I would often mix. But to me, I mean, you will have seen me do like a really, really careful mixing at times. Yellow ochre we definitely need on here. Um, <clears throat> I think part of part of all of that very careful mixing and learning how to mix is so that when you want to you can be significantly more free uh, and exploratory without losing the plot completely. So I'm really, I just want to start to get some things down and get things moving. So I'm looking at the leaves that are kind of on the edge of the shadow area. <clears throat> I 
Thank you, Carla. That's so nice to hear. Hello, Rosemary. Good to see you too. Yeah, I've missed I've missed these streams. When I was I was doing the that's too light and chromatic. When I was doing the the flower workshop, I kind of uh, I did start to miss the streams. I'm very happy to be back. I'm gonna want. Mm -hmm. It's okay. So I just want this effect back here of this like disappearing into nothingness and there being like um, a suggestion of something back here really so. This one is out in the light. So even if all I get out of this is one or two leaves that look really nice that I end up transferring to the other painting over the other side then. You know, it would be a win. And let's face it, it's a win just to be painting, really. Um, sometimes I get so wrapped up in doing... the online stuff, and as much as I love it, that I... I mean, website stuff. And I don't get to paint perhaps as much as I would like sometimes. I think when you're working loosely like this, there's a kind of um, <clears throat> yeah, get out in the fresh air, Candy. That's always a good idea too. <laughs> uh, there's a kind of um, a balance to be found between care and accuracy and expressiveness. Uh, not convinced I always find it. But you can't just go for it, you know, randomly. It needs, everything needs thinking about each stroke. Where would my green leaf be? Let's put some more colours up in the back. I'm, I'm not even going to get these in the right place, I don't think. I've started in such a... a loose way. And um, my, what I'm seeing here is, is now slightly different. When I took the photo, it was just in natural light and I've had to, I was saying I've had to put the other light out as well. I've, I've had to put an artificial light on the subject as well so that I can um, have enough light to stream by basically. It's for the cameras mostly. I could, I could quite happily paint with the amount of light I had I have but you wouldn't be able to see what I was doing I 
And part of what I want to figure out with this actually is, is it, how, how can I get this effect of leaves going back into the background without painting each individual leaf, you know? Hello, Anita. Great to see you. Hope you're well. Need some cast shadows in here. For, out for a green, I want the green now, and I want my um, green yellow. This is when, when I come to mix greens, I usually approach them like this. Sorry, you've had bad news. I am. I hope you're okay. Greens. Um, and this actually is a blue and a yellow I've got here, although you might not recognize them immediately. So this is ivory black. I discovered this by looking at a tube of sap green that I really liked from Old Holland and found out what they had in there and it was black an aralide yellow and a thallo green. So this is ivory black, this is aralide yellow, this one is Michael Harding bright yellow lake. PY3. An ivory black of course being a blue you mix them together and you get a green. You can get, I suppose you could say a warmer yellow if you used um, cad yellow for this. But by itself, it's too, it's already too yellow. I want it slightly closer to a blue green. And that's where the thallo green comes in. This one, you can see I don't use this much. You know, I've had this tube so long, I've had to wrap it in tape to hold it together. Windsor and Newton, Windsor green, yellow shade. You're very welcome, Marianne. Um, get a tiny little bit, a tiny little bit, not too much, and see how strong it is, how it swings the hue. I need a bit more light on my palette, I think. We'll see if I can bring up the camera exposure on the palette a bit. 
And basically, I'm going to stream today until the light fails me, which is probably going to be quite soon, because I've got the backup light. Um, <clears throat> of course, but also... Uh, It is just a backup light. I've only got one set up. I haven't really set it up properly. So there's a really good chance that I will lose the light outside very soon. So what I want to do with this is I want a, that's a, like a nice middle version. I want a dark version, light and shadow. Even when I'm mixing like quickly and kind of on the fly like this, which I very rarely do to be fair. Um, I'm always thinking in terms of light and shadow. Yeah, good low value. And where these leaves go into the light, they go, I think more yellow, but also drop the chroma. And if I want to drop the chroma of a green, I'll use ivory black with white up to the same value. Mm. With a little raw umbra as well, which is basically yellow orange. So this all comes from Monsoor, you know, from a lot of mixing practice. Then I can mix those together and drop the chroma of the green. Bring it up into the light. Bit of TRO in there because there's a bit of a warmth to these the shadow areas. So there's a leaf down here. Um, it's going to be about there probably. I'm just going to try and use the shadow shape to draw it in. side of it is just approaching the light a little bit. <laughs> tube of poor fox and green. I think you could, it's probably more correct to call it Old Holland Sap Green. I, I like to, um, I like to mix it from the components though, because, uh, I guess because it's, it's really the, the same every time and, um, depending on the subject, I might bring it more towards the blue green or more towards the yellow green or, you know, higher or lower chroma. But I mean, you know, it's, it's, it is a good idea to have mixes you use a lot tube dot. I'm probably just not organized enough to do it. So this is, I mean, 
because I'm working into the couch here, it just makes everything much easier. The, the marks go on smoothly. If I was doing this on a dry panel, I would really struggle. Um, I really think if you, I mean, people uh, ask uh, quite a lot about, or I hear people, I see people say a lot, you know, on Facebook and stuff, about wanting to paint looser and more expressively. Um, and my, my usual advice is, well, it depends. I mean, if, if, it's, if it's someone who has really strong drawing skills already, then it's different. But for most people, I would generally say, you know, get better at painting slowly because I think there's a, a misconception a lot of the time that um, expressive painting and expressive brush, brush marks is, is done quickly and, you know, People think like a, a sergeant would paint really fast, and it's not, I don't think it's too tall. He's painted really slowly. Need some more light in here and some green. Using the wrong brush, oops. <clears throat> and, um, but all, all of that said, you know, I really do think that's good advice is, is to practice accuracy. And, because it's really important to be, if you're going to paint like this, you need to be able to paint accurately, reasonably accurately, you know. Otherwise it just comes up, it just, it doesn't work out so well, you know. I've tried it a lot of times so, and not had it work out so well. And, um, but if you, if you're already like pretty good at painting accurately, then, you know, working with synthetics into a couch is like, I, I, hate, I hate this phrase, but it's like the secret, <laughs> you know, it really works um, because the, the brush marks just go on so easily. Um, and there's a, a fluidity to them and an expressiveness that I, I don't think you can really get any other way. And and it, it only seems to be there really when the couch is fresh. A couch, I mean, you know, the layer of oil and um, oil and turps mix that I started with. It works best on the first session, so you want to get the kind of the expressiveness in then, really, I think. But it's not, uh, you know, if anything, uh, Try and paint more carefully, painting like this. And I've got green on my cast shadow brush, which is a really bad idea. But the cast shadows are really responsible for a lot of the showing of form, you know, of making something appear that it's it's physically there in space. When I do like careful value studies, quite often start with um, the background, which would be this area, then the ground, which would be this area, and then. Uh, and then put the cast shadows in. And your brain is already telling you that there's something there. Even before you painted the object, it's like it's, it almost gets you like halfway there. You know, your brain is expecting something to be there at that point. Yeah. 
as soon as you have shadows in. I think I'm gonna, I like this leaf here. I think I'm gonna attempt to mix um, color for this ground area so that I can cut back into things a little bit. Let's put some cash shadow here. You can't, you couldn't put in strokes like this on a, on a panel without a couch. It just wouldn't, it wouldn't take, it wouldn't work. I pretty much like the value here. With this area at the front here, this light area. I just want to be able to cut back into those, the edges of those cast shadows a little bit in places and add a bit of more kind of drier looking texture maybe. Yes, you absolutely can put a, a couch on a linen board, and I do it all the time. What I do is I, I get these linen boards, um, fine linen boards, and um, sorry, I'll finish this sentence in a second. <laughs> and um, fine linen boards and I, I, I cover them with, I give them a second coat of oil primer and I put it on with this palette knife with the curved edge, almost like a trowel. Um, so it's kind of irregular. But smooth. Um, and then leave that a couple of weeks to dry. And then paint um, And then uh, when I come to paint it, put a couch over it, the same as this, wipe it off. And you end up with the most wonderful surface to paint on. And it takes this, I mean, this is just an ampersand board. I haven't done anything with this, um, but it takes uh, paint beautifully that surface.
can have a leaf there, one there, one here. Hello, Alexandra from Germany. Nice to see you. I'm looking forward to this yellow leaf here, but I, I, uh, I'm not quite ready to, to go there yet. I've just slowed the pace down a little bit so I can kind of feel feel a, a bit more way through where it's going to go. You're very welcome, Jude. I'm enjoying this one actually now, I must admit. I think it's um, from being feeling somewhat nervous about it at the start, I have a feeling it might actually work. <laughs> no. This all need resolving a lot more, but <clears throat> I can make it work at the front. And hopefully, well, not like around here, we'll hopefully have less to do up there. So I've got a leaf here, green leaf, got the yellow one and I've got this red one here. I'm going to put this red one in, I think. That's what I got the quinacridone rose out for and also to um, change the hue a little bit of this um, that I painted in here. It's a blue red. Same kind of leaf, not the same kind. But my palette's everywhere today. Basically, I've just steamed straight in. I almost never do this. Uh, look at that gorgeous. This here is this beautiful red orange is quinacridone rose and um cad yellow both from michael harding and the chroma you can get with those two i don't bother putting cad red on my palette anymore because if i've got those two then then it's just superfluous this here is naphthol red which gives me a little bit more chroma if i want it just a little bit Kind of in the dark reds. So I'm kind of thinking more lighter and more shadow. So this is quinacridone rose and, and tiara. I realize my palette is a mess today. Let me clear around that. I'm still thinking in terms of light and shadow, you know. So this is my greens like 
from light to shadow. So I'm looking at that red leaf and this is like light and shadow. Quinacridone rose and transparent red oxide. The transparent red oxide is there to keep the value down and, and push the hue towards orange. Quinacridone rose and cat yellow. A fresh brush. And I usually, when I bring a new brush in, I, I give it like, this is my linseed oil here. I'll give it a little dip in the linseed oil um, and then wipe it off. Decorators call it working the brush in. So you're not going in with a dry brush that just soaks up all the paint. This is going to be like too chromatic. Let's put it on anyway, just for fun. Now I can't, it's going to be too much. Um, let's tone it down a little bit. Where's this leaf? I'm really enjoying painting leaves. I have a strong feeling that this won't be the last time that I paint them. And it's making me wonder about actually doing some paintings just of leaves. Uh, now I'm, uh, I think I'm going to put uh, the yellow leaf in, Karen, but I'm, I'm looking at the red one at the moment. I think the yellow one will go in and also this green one over here will probably go in as well. And some more fiddling back here. I don't, I'm, I'm probably going to leave this as a one session study, to be honest. Um, and just see, I mean, you know, because I've drawn it out so poorly, I mean, there should be loads more space between these leaves here. So, you know, I'm just going to have to kind of stick things in wherever I can, I can fit them in, really. I should have been a lot more careful on the drawing out. This is my cast shadow brush, which I'm now using for painting the leaves. I've just completely lost my... my <laughs> usually I try and keep different brushes for different things. I've lost that today as well. Okay, shadow brush, now I've got red on it. I tend to paint with a lot of brushes because I sort of, every time I mix a new, a new color for a new area of the painting, I tend to, ah, didn't want to do that. I tend to um, get a fresh brush out so that it's, the color is clear and clean. There's some greens in this leaf. It's really beautiful. To come from our, I think it's from the cherry tree, which is just cherry blossom tree, which is just losing all of its. Um... You see, if I'd have put this leaf, if, if there was enough space between these two, the cast shadow of this leaf wouldn't is would wouldn't be there, and I would be able to see this edge of the leaf here much better. I'm going to have to fudge something. This frustrating because it's going to make this leaf more difficult to see. <clears throat> Hopefully it will work all right anyway. Just a little bit frustrating that I didn't do a better job of that. Steamed in too quickly because I was nervous and wanted to get something down. 
Now this leaf is overhanging this one, so there's going to be a cast shadow. Um, small one now, let's get a little brush. This is a Rosemary's Eclipse, this angled, it's a, this is like a quarter inch one, like a small. The green is mixed from, a lot of people struggle with greens, this is like a magic recipe for greens. Ivory black, uh, you want a yellow, now I usually use this Arilide yellow, this is, any Arilide yellow will do, Hansa yellow is an Arilide yellow, this is um, Michael Harding Bright Green Lake which is PY3, Arilide yellow is, um, uh, sorry, Hansa yellow is PY74 usually. Get some cast shadow here, actually, uh, which is a very greenish yellow, high chroma greenish yellow. Very useful. So that's, uh, um, Ivory black and yellow, and you can use, if you want to, you can use um, cad yellow, which will which will make a, a much yellower green. You could say a warmer green, if you, I guess, if you wanted to. And um, then a little bit of. To send it back blue again, more towards a blue green. If it's too yellow, I put thano, a thano green in. Very, very small amount now. It's very easy to overdo. Ridiculously easy. That's too dark. and snow. We're, we're actually having quite a warm, warmish um, winter so far, or it's, uh, autumn so far. So some of my roses, a couple of them still have uh, flowers. But I've kind of, I've, I've gone off into, um, into autumn subjects now. <laughs> And I probably won't get to them before they finally do go. So in this cast shadow here, some of the colour of the leaf, the light, the light is, is like painting flowers. Some of the light is travelling through the leaf and bringing a little bit of the red into the shadow. Um, definitely uh, for leaves, I think personally flat synthetics work really, really well. like flower petals better than trying to do them with a rounded brush that isn't really going to make the right kind of uh, shapes.
Thank you, Darren. What a lovely thing to say. I'm just kind of um, experimenting really today a little bit. Seeing I've never actually tried to paint just a bunch of leaves before. And uh, beginning to think that actually uh, may well make a very beautiful subject if I can get good at them. Let's sort this shape out here. The colours are just so gorgeous. Uh, but I'm not, I haven't munseled anything, so I can't really tell you like munsel notations or anything today, I'm afraid. So that was not, no, didn't have enough paint. And that's ended up being, see, this is all kind of, it's gone sort of wishy washy and unclear and doesn't have an edge. I didn't have enough paint. Not emphatic enough and um, semi-dry brush, it just didn't get the edge. Any difference in shape between what I have on the, my painting and the reference photo is entirely due to lack of skill on my part. <laughs> These colors are gorgeous. They're mostly like around the middle, sort of middle chroma range. Um, See, this should be lighter here, just have a bit more colour, I think. It's, some of it is like it's just starting to come out into the light. Not drop too much chroma. So, TRO and CAD yellow to give it more chroma. So I'm trying to have a, like a feeling of it all going back into shadow here and being very vague and then just bringing out some details. Uh, to kind of show some form without hopefully having to paint too much. Uh, because trying, I mean, it would take forever to paint them really carefully and it's not really the effect I'm after what I, I want really is I suppose uh, it's kind of a, looking for an approach uh, to painting leaves and possibly making them up so that I can put them into compositions like over the autumn and maybe into winter while I'm still painting these kind of subjects the quinces and apples and pears <clears throat> uh, let's have a go at that yellow leaf. Bring it in that here. I'm going to paint the cast shadow in first. It's going to be in hopelessly the wrong place, so I might have to change the side of it, size of it. Sorry. Oh, kids are back from forest school. It's about to get chaotic in here.
And you get a bit of cast shadow here. Oh, I've got to go and let them in. <laughs> Look at you! Did some Whoa! First, we did some whistling. I'm live at the moment, okay? So I need to get back to my stream. You are covered! What? Huh? Can you not look? Why? What? But I don't want you to look. Oh, okay. I've been doing whittling. Have you? They're well, you really can. Exciting. Your you, your your faces are covered in mud. Listen, I've got to get face. back to my thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I won't look. I'll, I'll be out in a bit. All right. <laughs> oh dear. Thanks, Christopher. See you later. Mm. Yeah, the yellow is a Michael Harding Bright Yellow Lake. Uh, it's an aralide yellow. Uh, so cast shadow here, so the edges of the cast shadow will get increasingly soft the further they move from the object. Um, and you can start, this is what I mean about cast shadows, you can start to get an impression of something being there. Even though I haven't painted the leaf yet. Your brain starts to tell you that there must be something there. It's a little too dark. I'm just trying to get the, the kind of the shape right. There's a shadow from the stalk there. Mud fun, yeah. <laughs> it's true, Jim, yeah. It's I mean I, I I couldn't do this, I don't think. Personally, I couldn't do it if I hadn't spent a lot of time mixing really carefully, you know. Um so that this leaf is interesting. It's there's the top of the leaf has more chroma and is quite yellow. Um and where it curls round underneath, it's very, very low, very low chroma. And I want to drop that a little bit. So this is yellow. Oh, my palette's such a mess today. This is uh, cad yellow. Now that went, that dropped it too much. And I brought in some raw umber, but it sent it too green and dropped it too much. Yeah, junk. Not sure. Cat yellow. White. Obviously, too chromatic. And the value is. It's only really the chroma that shows you it because the value is almost the same as the as the ground there, so the value needs to go up quite a bit. So it may be that just by putting in the white, the chroma will drop enough. It wants to be a little, a tiny bit more orange, I think, so I'm gonna bring in a little bit of that naphthol red, push it slightly orange. Out there, would it be? Um, running out of brushes. Of oil, wipe off. I'm just going to put a dab of this color on and see. Maybe a bit too chromatic, but maybe a little bit. But it needs to show against the cast shadow and be about the same value as the, the ground around it. Probably a bit too chromatic. So this is like I'm after shadow color for the 
There are two very sp specific areas uh, for this leaf. The underside and the top side. So on the top side, the, the shadow is more chromatic because the light is. And on this side is different. It's uh, where it curls round, it's much lower chroma. More tiara. Calm in the chaos. <laughs> Not always. <laughs> Not always calm in the chaos. But there's nothing like painting to help with that. <clears throat> I would want some, like up in here, I'm not going to get there today, but up in here I'd want some more definition of a few, just a few lights. Lights, I think, shining up there. Um, let's get this yellow leaf in first. Though. Yeah, that's too chromatic. It may work. So the edges are really important in showing the form, like a hard edge here. I need to get that edge a little bit harder there. A hard edge down the edge of the leaf and then a soft edge on the cast shadow. They're really important, those little things in showing the form. That need to be looked after really carefully. <clears throat> Um, the drawing's not terribly good on that leaf. I need to cut into it a little. Yeah. So the, the light, the underside of the leaf, need more white. It's going to be, it's a similar value. If you squint down, it's hard to see the division between the two sides of the leaf, but it's much, much lower chroma, almost disappearing. Give me a much lower chroma yellow there. Of about the same value. So although the palette is messy, it looks very messy. I'm thinking, you know, this is one side of the leaf. I'm um, light to shadow. The shadow color I use is actually there. And this will be the other side of the leaf, light to shadow. And um, the shadow side on the underside of the leaf is much, much lower chroma. They're both much lower chroma. So I'm choosing lower chroma tube pigments to mix something, you know, a lower value yellow ochre and raw umber instead of um, transparent red oxide. This was with a bit of raw umber because it was too high chroma and a little yellow for the, the higher chroma side. This is where we find, of course, that it doesn't work at all. We'll try it and see. Lighter. It goes lighter, the underside. You're very welcome, Sandra. So um, I'm 
I'm putting this on really thick so I get nice hard edges. It's going to go, it's entirely in the wrong place. It's going to go right out there. And it curls away on both edges, so it curls away here. This is shadow. Losing the form a bit. <laughs> Ginny, yeah, they really are covered in mud. You should see them. They are absolutely coated all over their faces, right up their trousers, like they're <laughs> completely covered. It sounds like they've had a brilliant time, though. We didn't want to send them back to school, one, because we don't think it's safe for them, um, two, because I have an autoimmune disease. Um, which uh, I'm on high dose steroids at the moment for three. Um, they've just been so much happier at home. This is too chromatic, like that shadow there. I'm not happy with it. Oops. Thank you. 
Let's have a nice emphatic edge here. Let me show. Now the light from the window is, is really dropped now and I mostly have the light from the artificial light which is changing the feel of the cast shadow somewhat in a way that I don't particularly like. Um, which is a shame. Edges are less defined. Uh, sorry, more defined now than they were. What I would, I'm going to um, finish the stream pretty soon. Um, if I had the time um, to carry on uh, working on it a bit more, I would be bringing things. I'll just bring, see if I can bring something up in there. There's a um, I just want a definition of a leaf. It kind of comes around here like this. And just shows the edge of this one just a bit here. This red one. Would start coming back up and, and uh, looking for more to be able to do with these leaves back in here. So the bit that I haven't been able to finish and resolve is this leaf here. Oh, I've missed some green off this leaf though. There's a bit that's, there's my green brush. There's a bit that's turned towards the light. Again, it's very high value. I want thick paint. Chrome at high value because it's where it's curled here. I'm just really just kind of looking for where I can bring in a little bit of definition to um, bring things out a little bit more here and there. Make sure I've got sharp edges where I need them, like an edge of a form, and then soft where they need to be, like the cast shadows, where they need to be soft. Study. I'm definitely losing the light now though. I'm gonna to have to um I'm gonna to have to call it a day. It's actually getting dark outside and um only only my light that I hurriedly set up as I started painting has allowed me to keep going. 
Um, but thanks very much for watching everyone. I really enjoyed that one. I think I'll probably do some more uh, leaf. Maybe I wonder if I can... Oh, I've just seen something I've got to do before I leave it now. Didn't finish the red leaf. Um, maybe I'm wondering now if I might be able to... Um, make something really you know that really nice paintings of just of just leaves whether that would be possible to do maybe mostly leaves with just uh, something in the body to give them a little bit of uh, of interest. There's a bit of green in this leaf, so beautiful. I would like to be able to do more up here, but I, I'm out of time. Interesting first attempt, though, uh, at um, making a painting purely of leaves. Probably going to feature again before too long. Um, for everyone who's waiting for the workshop sign up, apologies again, it will be ready soon. Hopefully tomorrow, if not tomorrow, hopefully Thursday. Um, I hope you enjoyed the session today. I really did, um, more than I thought I was going to. Um, <clears throat> and I uh, can't leave it alone, just can't leave it alone. I just want a bit more, just, I mean, from just from a point of view of the painting, I would just want this to stand out a little bit more. Yeah, that would be it, I think. A little bit on the other side. <clears throat> oh yes, the, the, the photo is, is in the Art of Calm group. You can download it there, click on it and download it. Um, I think it might be a, a Facebook, I think, kind of... Um, so hard to stop sometimes. I think Facebook... Um, reduces the, the, the quality a little bit of the pictures, but you can always, if you've got my email address, well, that's nice. You can always email me. Uh, and uh, if not, and look on my site, learning to see and subscribe, and then you'll, you'll get my email address and you can always email me and um, ask for the photo and I'll, I'll send it to you and it won't be so uh, reduced. Well, maybe I'll stick it up on my site and link it. Um, <clears throat> thanks very much for watching, everyone. I'll see you. Probably I'll be online again on Thursday, I imagine. See you later. Have a lovely evening. <laughs>